What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Blake Cast. In this podcast, we break down the word to discover truth for our daily walk. Welcome back, everybody, to the Blake Cast. I'm so glad you joined me again today. Again, today, we are discussing the five one chapter books of the Bible in our short and sweet series. I hope you've been enjoying this series so far. We've talked about the books of Obadiah and Philemon. If you have not, I hope you have listened to that. And if again, if you haven't, go back, listen. And if you liked it, please go ahead, share that with a friend or a family member. Put it on your social media accounts. Get this podcast out there for people to join in on this conversation and discovering truth for our daily walks. Um, I'm so excited for today's lesson, discussing the book of 2 John. The book of 2 John is really an important book, even though it's just only 13 verses long. There's some really good meat that we can get, and a little fun uh, connection at the end that I want to discuss from this book. So let's go ahead, let's get right into this. So we're going to start in verse number one, and it says, The Elder... This elder is uh, John speaking. Uh, "To To the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all of those who have known the truth, because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever, grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. All right. So what do we learn from these first three verses? Point one today is the truth abides in us and is with us forever. You see, John, he's speaking to this so-called elect lady and her children, probably some kind of house church or whatever. He's talking to them and he's saying that he loves them in the truth and everybody that knows the truth also loves them because of the truth which abides in them and will be with them forever. You see, when you have the Spirit of God, when you are a child of God, a a Christian, you have the Spirit with you. And guess what? The Spirit is also referred to in Scripture as the Spirit of truth. And when Jesus is saying this, In the book of John, also written by most likely this John, when he's talking in there, he's talking about that spirit of truth that Jesus talks about in his account. And he goes on to say that I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you. So Jesus equates himself with this spirit of truth or this comforter. And again, also in the book of John, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when we're talking about this truth abiding in us and being with us, John is really talking about Jesus, God in the flesh, abiding with you and being with you. Because truth is a part of who God is. He is all true. And so... Because we know that, we know that truth can be with us and abide in us because Jesus, the Spirit, can abide in us and be with us. And so when he's continuing, grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. He's going right back to what we see in the Gospel of John. And really, it kind of paints this really cool picture of you have the truth, which is also Jesus, and we equate God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. So he's really getting a big picture of the Godhead and everything we know about this one true living God manifest in the flesh. And so we continue on. So again, number one. The truth abides in us and is with us forever. Starting with verse 4. I rejoice greatly 
that I have found some of your children walking in truth, as we receive commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I write a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. So point number two today is that we must continue in love one to another. If we don't have one love one for another, there will be division. The kingdom of God won't grow. The body won't be edified. And you have all these problems. But what's interesting is that he's talking about this is love that we walk according to his commandments. And this is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. So really, there's this combination like we see talking about grace, mercy, and peace be with you in truth and love from verse 3. We're continuing this theme of truth and love here talking about, hey, you need to love one another. And just as you continue in truth and you continue in your commandments, which is also love, you should not only just show that love to God in his commandments, but you should show that love one to another and be dedicated to one another to edify the body of Christ, to fellowship and break bread together, to be unified, just like they were on the day of Pentecost. You see, fellowship and this unity was so vital to the growth of the early church, and it's so vital to the growth of the church today. We must be unified. We must love one another and be dedicated to one another to seeing the furtherance of the kingdom and the edification of the body, we must seek this. So again, number two, we must continue in love one to another. Now we're going to get to point number three, and we're going to start with verse seven on this one. It says, For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves. That we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. So we're continuing this discussion of truth in this chapter And now we're talking about the truth of Jesus. And so the point number three today is that we must know the truth of who Jesus is. We must understand that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, the Savior of the world. But not only that, we must understand that Jesus truly came in the flesh. In the early centuries, soon after the apostles, and even during John's time, which is why you see him writing about this, there were some people rising up who were starting to claim that, you know, Jesus didn't actually come in the flesh. He was just this spiritual being that we saw like he was flesh, but he really wasn't flesh. Well, the reality is that if we believe that, we completely undermine the gospel. Because if Jesus didn't come in the flesh then he didn't truly die on the cross for our sins. He didn't truly shed blood on Calvary. He wasn't truly a sacrifice for us. He can't truly be Savior if he didn't come in the flesh. This undermines the gospel, undermines who Jesus is. That Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. God manifest in human flesh, truly God and truly man. And when you understand this about God, it says here that you will have both the Father and the Son. When you abide in that truth, you'll understand the fullness of God and everything about Him. And this idea of the incarnation and how that all works within who God is. You have to understand that God truly robed Himself in flesh manifested himself in that way, 100% God, 100% man, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And when you understand that, you'll have the fullness of God in your mind and in your belief. 
So you have to understand that today. We have to understand who Jesus is. Because if you don't understand who Jesus is, you don't have God. If you don't know who Jesus is, you don't know who God is. Because Jesus is the one true living God in the flesh. So number three, again, we must know the truth of who Jesus is. Starting with verse 10 now, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. So this is kind of strong language here. And there's some really important points we have to get from this. So point number four is that we must give no place to false doctrine. And I know this seems harsh sometimes, but John, he really lays it out clearly here. If anyone comes to you who does not bring this truth of who Jesus Christ is, do not even let them come into your house. Don't even greet them. Now, this is powerful language. Like, what? what? So we're supposed to just, you know, keep them out of our lives, not even give them place to be friends? Pretty much. Because if they don't believe who Jesus is, then how are they going to get anything else right? This is the foundation. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. That is the first commandment. If we don't get that right, we get nothing right. And so that's why it says don't receive them into your house. Don't even greet them. Because you cannot let that creep into your life and destroy what God is building in you. It'll just get you off track. It'll get you all in the weeds and not where you need to be. Because when you greet that and when you embrace that, you're sharing in this evil deed called false doctrine. We can't allow it. We must know what we believe, and we must stand on the truth of the word of God. We must give no place to false doctrine. And that, again, is point number four. And finally, with our last point, this is going to be a fun one. It seems completely off topic, but really, when you read it, it's kind of what he's saying. So verse number 12, John says this, Having many things to write to you, I did not wish to do so with paper and ink. But I hope to come to you and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. The children of your elect sister greet you. Amen. So, okay, this is just the salutation. You know, this is John saying farewell. See you soon. But he says something really interesting here. That he wants to write more to them. He wants to tell them more. But he doesn't want to do it over paper and ink. But he wants to see them face to face that their joy may be full. So point number five today is that more can be communicated in person than over text. Now, this is, seems like a very 21st century kind of thing, but it's true throughout time. Even in John's day, he understand that you know, just writing a letter is not going to be good enough. But I need to see these people face to face, sit down and talk to them. There's nothing like getting together with the brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God and talking about all the things that God's doing in your life and speaking face to face about the goodness of God and just about life and just hanging out and fellowshipping. It brings joy to the situation it brings full joy when we can communicate with our brothers and sisters, be together. You know, the Bible says to fail not the assembly together, even as you see the day approaching. We cannot fail to get together and be united as the body of Christ. And, you know, just sending an email is not going to do it. Just coming to an online church service on Facebook not going to cut it. Just listening to this podcast is not going to cut it. 
but you need to get plugged into the body of Christ and meet face to face with like minded believers to fellowship and edify one another. That's so important today. Much more is going to be done in person, right next to somebody, than over text or technology. Again, point number five, more can be communicated in person than over text. And if we can get a hold of that, I think we'll really understand the power of fellowship and unity. Not only just getting together, but getting together in unity over the doctrine of who Jesus is. And really, that's the whole point of this whole book, is this idea of truth and love. We need the truth and we need love. If we have one and not the other, then we'll be unbalanced. But when we have that balance of truth and love, we truly are becoming the church and doing what Jesus wants us to do. So let's go over our five points today real quick before we go. Number one, the truth abides in us and is with us forever. Number two, continue in love one to another. Number three, we must know the truth of who Jesus is. Number four, give no place to false doctrine. And number five, more can be communicated in person than over text. I hope this is a benefit to your life today, that you've really seen this book in a new light, that you really understand kind of the point of what John is saying in this short little book, only 13 verses. And I hope you can apply it, that you've discovered some truth for your daily walk today. And if you have enjoyed this episode of the podcast, please, you know, follow us on social media. Well, follow me, rather, on social media. Uh, Or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to the podcast on your platform of choice. Share this episode with a friend or a family member or on social media. Get it out to as many people as you can because we want to connect with people with the truth of God's word and continue to bring this message of truth and true doctrine and breaking down the scriptures together and breaking bread. Even if it is over a podcast, it's still something And I hope, again, that this blesses you. Um, Again, God bless. Don't forget, glorify the kingdom of God today and edify his body.